Oh hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink, I have in sample form, and it's by the brand, well it says Faber-Castell, but it's actually Graf von Faber-Castell. And this is one of the, uh, I think they just put out two new inks this year, this is one of them. The other one was, I think, Midnight Blue. This one is Deep Sea Green. And actually, this color is very similar to another major brand uh, who puts out an ink every year. And in fact, the colors are very similar. And unfortunately, I ended up having the same opinion about both inks. Now, this is actually not much of a green in this green. It is an aquamarine, so I guess deep sea green, aquamarine sea foamy something there's not a lot of green in it it's more of a teal but uh <laughs> and actually i hope this shows up uh it's actually very blue in the bottle and when it's wet on the page and then as it dries it actually gets a bit lighter and uh it turns a little bit more green so now the two pens i used were these and it's actually two of the exact same pen uh this is a lamy safari with an extra fine nib of course, it's European because he's a German made. And this is another Lamy Safari that's identical, except for the fact that it has a broad nib. Then give us a nice breath to compare. Now, let's look at some comparisons. So here is Graf von Pfeffer Castell's Deep Sea Green. And this may or may not be the other ink that I was alluding to earlier. I cannot confirm or deny it. Now, if we look at deep sea green, we can see that there are some definite areas of blue with sort of hints of green, greenishness poking through. That is definitely what we see with this one. This is Pelican Edelstein's uh, Aquamarine, ink of the year for 2016, I believe. Uh, this one is another recent addition by another major brand, and this might also be limited. This is Mont Blanc's Blue Hour. So you might be able to tell it's a little bit richer a little bit darker, but uh, also has the much more distinct separated areas of green. And I hope this shows up. You see right here? We actually have a little bit of red sheen on here, which for a 100% cotton bond paper is not easy to achieve. Now here is Diatramentus Jeans Blue. You can see it's a little darker, a little more saturated, but definitely has that thing where it's got the distinct little areas of more green. And lastly, this one is by another major brand, however, this one is anything but limited edition. This is Waterman's Mysterious Blue, which is actually their blue black. And another ink that was very nearly in here, except I cut myself off at four, uh, is Parker's Quink Blue Black. A lot of the major, bla major like old school brands, their blue black actually has this aquamarine kind of thing going on. So yeah, there are your comparisons. Now, bear with me. Okay, so this one on the left with the little D in the corner, that is the one that I let dry. That is not how you're supposed to do it, but I feel like it's taught me some things over the years. Now, this one is the one I did the way you're supposed to, where you put the line of ink and then essentially instantly drop it in the water. What I think is interesting is we see almost no green. What we do have are little hints of gold. Like through here where the line of demarcation is, we have just these little hints of yellow. And it goes up through here but still kind of a slate gray. We get these little hints of purple, just little, little hints of it. And then we have this actually bright, vibrant blue up at the top. Now, the one that I let dry, bear in mind, this only had about maybe eight to 10 minutes to dry. Line is much darker. It actually is haloed in blue and purple, which I thought was fascinating. We have less of this sort of yellowish gold going through. We also have less purple, but we have a much more distinct light blue showing chemical tests, for lack of a better word. Now, I don't know if this is one of the Graf von Faber-Castell inks that are labeled as being document proof, and if so, I'm not entirely sure what they mean by document proof, because um, what I thought it meant uh, does not necessarily seem to be true. But anyways, uh, here's the water test. As you can tell, it really, really got it moving. Uh, you can only see the barest hints of a gray underneath where the original smear was. 
Uh, one third bleach solution, interesting enough, uh, got certain components of the ink moving and then cha made a change color. <laughs> Turned it into a much brighter green. Ammonia pen flush, I don't know what this is. I don't know how to describe that. I don't know what happened. It's almost like it managed to pick up some of the gray undertones and move them around, but I don't know. Hydrogen peroxide, it actually got rid of most of the blue and, if anything, almost like brought more of that gray gold thing underneath to the front, which was fascinating. Yes. Paper test, top down in density, Clairefontaine, 90 grams per square meter. Yes. Uh, so as I was saying before about that other ink that I mentioned, um, I was really excited about it. Uh, uh, I was actually really excited about both these inks. I think I bought samples of them at the same time. And I thought they were going to be a really fascinating color. However, they both kind of had the same shortfall. They're, they're too thin. Uh, I think this would be, and the other ink, would be really, really great if there was more ink in that ink. Uh, they look watered down, and from that they look dulled. You know, uh, it, it's like the, the saturation has been turned down on them or something. It's, uh, it's softened, which for an ink like this, I'm not sure is to its benefit. But um, yeah, anyways, that extra fine took 11 seconds to dry. The broad took 22, but it is a fairly wet flowing ink. It is a 6, if not a 6.5. Now, bear in mind that broad is actually wet all on its own. But I just want you to see those smears. Yeah. Uh, we do get shading. We get very pronounced shading. However, where it's not really dark, it looks thin and undersaturated. And even here, except for in the absolute darkest parts, you can still see the lines from the quadrilateral paper. Now, I actually kind of like the color. In fact, I just finished testing Mont Blanc's Blue Hour yesterday, and I quite like it. In fact, I moved it into a pen uh, so that I could use it more uh, and keep the other pen it was in for testing. This is... Mm, it's flat. It's dull. It's... It's like the intensity was turned down. It's, it's like it's on Valium or something. Um, it does have some nice effects. Now, undersaturated inks do tend to shade more. But, um, yeah, as you can probably see where it's laid on more thin, it is a little bit more blue, and it's where it's laid on more thick that it starts to turn more green. And there is a halo effect, a dark halo effect around the wettest parts, which I generally like, and in this case I do, because it, it needs more saturation. But, um... Yeah, very well behaved. There's no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. All good in that regard. I did think when I was testing this that this ink was one of the document proof inks, and I thought that that meant that it was going to have water resistance. I'm not sure that it does anymore. Because a lot of the th ones that I thought were going to have some water resistance kind of don't. But uh, yeah, so as you can see, it dyed the page a little bit. The extra fine is mostly gone, actually. The camera is increasing the contrast a little bit. Uh, the broad is very patchy. I mean, like, the top part of that R is gone. Top part of the A. Top of the S. Most of the E. Uh, and it's very light. It's very faint. It would not be the easiest thing in the world to recover. And that actually, all of these tests had at least an hour. So that's unfortunate. Uh, next up is Fabriano Echo Qua. I really love this stuff. The more I use it, the more I enjoy it. Uh, yeah. It couldn't really save it for me. Um, yeah, the extra fine took 12 seconds. <laughs> the already wet on its own broad took 26. And just look at the size of those smears. However, and I really hope this shows up on camera. Please. Oh, did you see the bottom scrubby? Please show up. Please, there's just the tiniest little bit of red sheen in here. So where it's laid on really thick, we actually have this interesting contrast of the light blue where it's light, and then a halo of red sheen, and then in the center where it's darkest, we get some green. And honestly, that is the best thing about this. <laughs> that I like that best. Um, and then here I'm going to bring this in 
Do you see the dark halo effect around the wettest parts of the broad writing? That's nice. Um, we do get a wide breadth of shading uh, because it is a little undersaturated. There's more to stack up on itself. Uh, yeah, uh, there's no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo. All good in that regard. It is still fairly wet flowing. And again, I was expecting some water resistance. There's barely, barely any. Um, these light gray dots on this dot paper are darker. Uh, and the camera's inc increasing the contrast a little bit again. However, it didn't really dye the page, which is nice. Again, it's kind of patchy, like parts of letters are gone. Um, I guess it's better than nothing. If you had to recover it, you might be able to pull something out of it. Um, yeah. Next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. I feel like people know this stuff. Uh, we kind of have more of the same. Uh, well, the extra fine took 10 seconds to dry. The already wet on its own broad took 23. And actually, I forgot to point this out before, but I'm gonna... So you look at this bottom scrub, uh, smear, the original lines. See how they're kind of like that golden yellow? And that's actually true for all of them. So where it's very, like, fresh and you move it, it stays gold, which I thought was kind of fascinating. But yeah, uh, also, I don't know if this will show up. Camera, calm down, it's okay. No, it doesn't want to show up. There is a hazy red sheen in both of the scrubbies. It is not the easiest thing in the world to find in the writing. Uh, there is a dark halo effect around the wettest part, so most significantly in that broad. Uh, it does look undersaturated on here. Uh, yeah, you can see the lines from the quad paper, which is unfortunate, but um, yeah, honestly, I think I would really like this ink if it was just more saturated. If I felt like there was a safe way that I could like leave the the cap on the sample vial just like a little unscrewed to let it evaporate just a tiny bit and condense just a little, little... Or maybe I'll just stick with Blue Hour. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo. There is a little bit of sheen. You do have to lay it on very thick and it's mostly hazy, but it's kind of there if you push it far enough. Now, water test, it didn't dye the page. When I soaked up the water, it sort of took any of the ink that floated away with it. But I think there's the least remaining that we've seen so far. And it is patchier than we've seen before. Like, at least half of the letters are gone. That extra fine is just gone. The dots from the broad are actually quite clear. Uh, but if we look at that, that's unfortunate, but... Hmm. Next up is Tomoe River. It's known for drawing out shading and sheen and dry times and echo. We kind of get all of that. Um, here it looks undersaturated. It looks thin, uh, which is not great. I do not like that look personally. Some people do, I'm sure. I don't know any personally, but there's gotta be people out there. Um, we do have extended dry times. The extra fine took 15 seconds, the broad took 30, but actually if you remember the dry times from before, like, it's really not that much of a stretch. I was expecting more considering how wet flowing this ink is and the way this paper works, so could have been worse. Now on here, we probably have the most pronounced dark halo effect we've seen so far. And again, it's most obvious in the broad nib just because it's spewing ink. Which I like. I think it's a benefit to this because, you know, it's, it makes it darker. But anyways, because uh, it's Tomboy River, there's no bleed, no feather, no spread. There might be a little bit of echo, though, just from putting down so much ink. And the fact that this is 52 grams per square meter is practically half the density of Clairefontaine. And because where it's laid on thick, we get that dark halo. Uh, that might bother you if you're very sensitive. However, I think you'd be all right with that extra fine. Uh, yeah. Now, I don't know if this is going to show up. Please show up. Come on. There's just a tiny bit of red sheen in the scrubby, and there's like a red sheen in some of the darkest halos, like around no and bleed. But uh, yeah, it just doesn't want to show up today. Now, water test. This paper loves to let ink slide away when you add water. Considering the last test that we saw, I was expecting that to happen. That this stuff would just go. 
it didn't actually. It's kind of on par with the other papers, which surprised me because this is an extraordinary type of paper. Uh, the extra fine is pretty much gone. However, much more of the broad remained than I had been anticipating. It is patchy and it is extremely light and it would not be the easiest thing in the world to recover. However, if you had to, there would at least be a little bit of something there. Uh, granted, not a lot. And it would not be the same color. Now, for the next three tests, I only use the extra fine, except to write the name. And this is the world's worst 20 pound copier paper. This stuff is just utter trash. Yep. Uh, <laughs> we have spread, for sure. So here's Tumaway River, where there's no spread, and here's the worst paper ever, and the line width definitely increased. That's at least a European medium. Uh, yeah. So we lose most of the shading, which is unfortunate because um, the shading kind of helped where it was laid on more densely, it got darker, and this seems to mostly be trying to settle into a happy medium, and that's just... Eh. Uh, it took one and a half seconds to dry. We do have a wooliness. We do have some feathering. But I guess it could be worse. I mean, we do have some shading. It's not a lot. But, um, mm, yeah, as I was saying, the wet flow probably doesn't help here because this is just such a cheap absorbent paper. But uh, we do have some show through. And we have some spots of near bleed. Granted, they are tiny, tiny dots. They never rendered onto the page below. They just sort of made the other side uncomfortable. Yeah, I guess, guess it could be worse. Um, now, here is definitely the best water test we've seen so far. Now, more absorbent papers tend to draw the ink in, not want to let go. And that's kind of what we see here. It is fairly dark. It is fairly clear. Uh, it didn't dye the page much. It didn't feather. It didn't explode. It actually did pretty all right. That would be recoverable. Now, next up is Mead notebook paper. This is the kind you'd find in a spiral notebook, not the kind you'd find in, like, a composition notebook. Those tend to feel like newspaper. This stuff... This stuff is feathering like crazy, especially mine. I don't remember it always being like this, but... Mm. Uh, and we get more of that here. In fact, we have some pretty int intense feathering. But I just thought I should warn you that this is something that apparently my paper is especially susceptible to. It can be a bit distracting. However, as you can probably see, we actually retain some shading on here. Which is kind of nice, because again, as I said, you know, when they're shading, it can get darker, and the darker kind of helps. Uh, two and a half seconds to dry. Yeah, um... There is no bleed. None. At all. Which is very nice. So if you have to use this stuff, and you don't want an especially vibrant color, but you like this color, uh, this could work. Try it in a Lamy Extra Fine. It worked out great. Um, in fact, you can barely see much echo or show through like we've seen on some other tests even just this week. Yeah. That, I mean, if you're not sensitive, you could write on both sides. It's really not bad. Now, the water test, again, this paper can just freak out when you add water. And so I was kind of expecting much, much worse. If you see, it didn't explode really. It got a bit lighter, maybe. It didn't feather and freak out. That is absolutely recoverable. Now, lastly is moleskin, which is awful. Period. Full stop. Um, yeah, it's hideous. I hate this stuff. It's expensive and it's poorly made and I could rant for hours. Maybe someday I'll make that video. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it looks dusty on here, right? Like it, almost, like you know, it looks like you're looking at it like a dusty photograph of what the color should be, or I would prefer the color to be. It's uh, you get this intense wooliness, and you get feathering, and it's distracting. Uh, it took five seconds to dry. Uh, yeah, we get bleed, but also I I don't know if this is going to come through on camera, and I don't know why this happened, but. Okay, so you see this water test, the back of this water test, you see how it's a bright, vibrant blue? In fact, it kind of looks like the blue we see here, which is not the same color as the ink. 
like if we see them side by side you can see that one is definitely much more blue um fascinatingly enough that's the same color as the stuff that's coming out the back so it's it's almost like i'm putting the ink through a filter and the only stuff coming out the back is blue because these dots are not sea foamy green they're blue so that's weird um don't know what's going on there so water test it's feathering and exploding it's patchy it's it's half letting go half not is there something there yes um is it better than nothing i'm not sure how important is this for you to recover uh could be, as i say here i guess it could be worse yeah uh yeah so there you go for your consideration graf von faber castells deep sea green uh i was excited for this it's kind of a letdown uh kind of kind of the same for this honestly this stuff really isn't bad and if memory serves it's much less expensive uh because a 75 milliliter bottle of this deep sea green i think it's about 30 bucks but, um, yeah, I mean, like, I, d I almost don't want to say anything bad because I want this company to keep making new inks because for the most part, they're kind of okay. You know, I, some of their inks I really like. This one just kind of fell short. Um, did am amazingly well on water resistance, on cheap paper, uh, on mead. It actually did fairly impressively. Uh, you could just use a little more ink in that ink. Yeah. So, anyways, for your consideration from the Triple N Network, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching. Bye.